Hey everyone, it's PK here. Hope you're doing really well. I am back in Brisbane and enjoying the sunny weather. <laughs> really enjoying being back into the warmth of, of sunny Queensland. Um, so <clears throat> there's a, a few of you guys that, um, that have been asking me the sort of typical age-old question of should I buy my own home first to live in? And then should I buy investment properties and get into, get into the whole investment property game? Or should I buy investment properties first and then <clears throat> subsequently um, buy, buy my own place to live in my principal place of residence or PPOR? Um, there's about five or six people that have um, commented on, on the videos and um, also messaged me directly. So I thought I'd do a, a video on it just to explain. Um, there are so many reasons um, why <clears throat> it's better to get into the investment property game first and then buy your own principal place of residence from a financial perspective. But I just want to start off with an emotive perspective. So it's not always that finances should trump, you know, or should dictate what you should do. Sometimes it's just nice to have a, a home that you can call home, that you can't get kicked out of, um, and you can, you know, furnish it the way you like. Um, you can put um, paintings on the walls, all that sort of thing. So all those nice, warm and fuzzy feelings are very important, <clears throat> but <clears throat> I'm sort of disregarding them for the purpose of this conversation. Um, so the first reason that it makes sense to um, get into the investment property game and then buy your principal place of residence is that if you do go ahead and buy your principal place of residence, then basically what you have is non-deductible debt. That just means that your debt is not for investment purposes, so it's not deductible. <clears throat> that inhibits your, your household cash flows because every dollar that you're paying in interest, every dollar that you're paying in principal, um, it's not offsetting any income that you're, that you're generating. So this is what 99.9% .9 of people do across Australia, and it takes them 30 or, or 35 years to pay off their, their home loan. Um, in general, that's not a good way to sort of get ahead, financially speaking. Now, if you don't have not deductible debt, or in other words, when you have um, investment property debt, which is deductible, you're paying less. It's actually improving your cash flows uh, versus a PPOR because it's deductible. It, you know, every <coughs> interest um, dollar that you're paying, it's um, potentially reducing the, um, the income that you earn, or at least in the tax man's eyes, it's reducing your taxable income. Right, so let's go, let's go through a scenario where, let's say you have already bought a place of your own, let's say you're in Melbourne or Sydney and the place cost $700,000, $800,000. You probably have a $600,000, $650,000, $700,000 debt on it <clears throat> and it's non-deductible. All of a sudden, you're hurting your household cash flow, so it's having a big impact on your life, um, like your lifestyle, your ability to go on holidays, watch movies, entertainment, all that sort of thing. But also, you know, not just from a strict cash flow perspective, it's also reducing your ability to get more debt in the bank size, right? So it's in inhibiting significantly your ability to actually purchase investment properties, right? Like if you're on an average income of, you know, let's say 80 to 100, $120,000, maybe a household income of 100, 150, $160,000, you're not going to be able to get that much more debt um, once you've already got non-deductible debt in your principal place of residence. So what that means is that you've basically stifled or truncated your ability to start an investment property portfolio from the get-go, just because you bought a PPOR, your principal place of residence. <clears throat> so you might still be able to get one or two investment properties and that's great, but really that's where it'll stop because you have all of this debt which is um, stifling your borrowing power and it's hurting your real household cash flows, your household budget. Now if you think about it the other way around where someone who hasn't actually bought any houses yet, they might be thinking, okay, should I buy 
um, a PPOR first or should I buy an investment property? And if they go ahead and buy investment properties on interest only, that is not going to be impacting their household budget one bit. In fact, um, it's very possible to buy high growth investment properties that are also high cash flow. In other words, instead of costing you money, like the PPOR debt, they're actually giving you income every single month, every single year. We're not talking tens of thousands of dollars from day one, obviously, um, but thousands of dollars. So that's actually adding to your um, ability to, to live a lifestyle, to go on holidays, to watch movies, all that sort of good stuff. But more importantly, um, by having deductible debt, you know, de debt in houses that are investment properties, the bank isn't penalizing you that much, <clears throat> right? It's not penalizing you as if you had non-deductible debt in your own home. So you're able to buy many, many, many more investment properties and really acquire, accrue a portfolio. And then let's just go through some high-level math, and obviously these are generic numbers, but let's say over the course of six or seven years, you are able to buy, let's say, four to five properties. Obviously, not everyone can do this. Many people can as well. Um, I don't know everyone's situation, but that's pretty, you know, it can be pretty typical um, for sophisticated, educated investors to achieve. You know, so you've acquired that portfolio and you've held it for 10 or 15 years. That portfolio, I'm not going to say has doubled, but it will have generated hundreds of thousands of dollars of equity. Okay, probably, in fact, most likely over that time period, at least half a million, a million, in my case, much more than that. In, in so many people's cases, much more than that, not just myself. Um, you know, easily one, two million dollars over that time horizon of, of equity. And so what you can then do is then compare your situation in that scenario versus had you gone ahead and bought your own home to live in. In 10 or 15 years time, you would not have achieved that equity in your own home, right? Because you only, you only had one asset. But through the power of leverage in investment properties, you can buy multiple properties and in 10 and 15 years time achieve that type of equity. So which is better? You know, it's a case of delayed sense gratification. Um, if you want to hang the, the, the pictures or the paintings of yourself in your, in your family, in your own home, and never have a landlord ever rip it down, um, and you want that sort of warm and fuzzy type, you know, aspect to a home, then maybe investing in, in, in properties isn't for you. But investing in properties will get you much more um, progressed in your wealth, in your family's wealth, in 5, 10, 15 years' time if you just sacrifice some of those things initially. Okay, and also, you know, the case is that if you buy your own principal place of residence, your own home to live in, um, you're unlikely to be buying in a high-growth area. And the reason is that the areas that you probably want to live in are very unlikely to also be high growth areas. Like right now, if I scan across Australia, and my clients know this as well as I do, it's pretty slim pickings in terms of the areas that are actually going to grow. You know, it's not a case that you just buy anywhere in Brisbane and just because it's affordable that it'll go up in value, that just because Melbourne did really well um, in recent history that it'll continue to do so that Geelong did well in recent history, that it will continue to do so. It's not the case. You know, there's only probably less than seven suburbs, and I'm not just making this up, I'm not exaggerating. There are less than seven suburbs that I would personally put my money in across Australia at the moment. That doesn't mean that they're, they're not going to, that it's bad to invest. All I'm saying is you have to be very selective. Anyway, back to the point. If you buy your own principal place of residence, it's very unlikely that it will actually grow to the extent that an investment property bought in the right location will. Okay, so it's a, you know, there's so many factors to, to consider when thinking about, should I buy my own home now or should I start an investment property portfolio? But, you know, the principle is you will be much better off financially, um, leaving aside the warm and fuzzy stuff, you will be much better off financially if you do go ahead and practice that principle of delayed gratification.
buy your investment property, your first one, second one, third one, fourth one, <clears throat> etc. Build that equity up whilst not sacrificing your lifestyle. And then in 8, 10, 12, 15 years, you can buy your dream home or and you can actually generate that passive income that I know, you know, that's the reason I got into it and so many people get into it. So, look, I don't mean to, to make it out like it's easy to achieve. It's not. Um, it takes a lot of commitment, it takes a lot of hard work. Asset selection is paramount. You need to know what you're doing. You can't outsource the responsibility um, to anyone because no one cares about your money as much as you do. Um, but I've been getting this question, should I buy my own home first? Or should I start the investment property journey first? Um, so hopefully that, that adds some color and some con context and content um, around answering that specific question. Um, just came to mind as well that, generally speaking, it's cheaper to rent in a place you actually want to live in than it is to own and pay a mortgage. So I know so many of my friends, they live in Manly in, um, in Sydney, and, you know, they just wouldn't even be able to afford um, to, to live in Manly if they bought a, a house there, right? But they love Manly and they can afford to rent. That allows them to become rent vesters, which is that strategy that I said. You rent, you don't buy your own home first. You rent and you use um, your borrowing capacity, you know, from your household income. You use your cash flows to get into the investment property game. So you're living in a terrific area, you're close to all amenity, all your friends, it's a great lifestyle, but you're also getting your money and your income work hard, working hard for you, right? You're getting that investment property, the first one, the second one, third one. They're each paying you as well, they're not a financial drag on you, but with the right asset selection, they're um, also going to be increasing in value. So <clears throat> this is possible. None of this is um, spruiking or anything like that. This is what I've done, um, you know, counting my lucky stars that it, that it worked. Um, so many of my clients have done. So many people who haven't worked with me have done. You know, it's not some secret source, but you do need to know how to do it. Um, so hopefully that was valuable, guys. If it was, then please can you leave a, a like or a love so I can get some reciprocation and see if it's actually making a difference. Um, and also, if you agree with anything I said or any specific points, feel free to comment right below. Um, or even if you disagree, you know, this, this group is, um, and, and my uh, videos are all about sparking discussion. Um, so feel free to comment. Okay, guys, see you later.